Okay, I'm pretty sure you must be seeing a lot of React Native tutorials about complex animations, but truth is, many applications often keep it simple. Among others, Twitter is one of them. The profile pages have these very natural animations, and I thought you might want to know how to make it in React Native. All right, let's do this. So in this video, we're going to work on a Twitter style profile screen. What is important to think about is not so much the animation itself, but the logic behind it. If you're not familiar with Twitter profiles, here you can see that it has a navigation bar that always stays on top, while what's below goes underneath as we scroll down. The key difference here is that if we scroll back up, the user banner should expand while taking all the space. So here's how this is going to work. Just imagine we have a scroll view taking about 90% of the screen height, and with the 10% we're left with, we could have a background image, the banner, and everything that composes the navigation bar. By doing this, we keep space for the banner to expand behind the scroll view and leave no white space. Now, code-wise, let's start with the foundation blocks of our screen. We need a list of tweets, so we get dummy ones using generate tweets here, and I just set links to both my profile and banner pictures. What you can also see are these header height constants. Narrowed means how much space the header gets when we scroll down, and expanded is how many pixels we should add to this when it is fully visible. We also have a safe area provider to later compute the notch height and keep it away from the header. All right. Now, if we focus on the components, we have this absolute back button that should always stay in place, and right below there is our banner picture. Its height is set to the sum of both constants because, as I mentioned, they represent the available space for the navigation bar and therefore the banner as well, which is the background of this header. Lastly, there is a scroll view that has an increase the index simply because the profile picture is displayed on top of the banner. Also, the margin top gives space for the navigation bar and the padding gives space for the profile picture. Everything below is just an image, our details and tweets. Okay, we're ready to start animating all of this. So first, because we need to animate elements based on the current scrolling, we need to store the scroll position somewhere. In React Native, we use animated values for that, working just like state values in React but without fully re-rendering our components when their value change. To create one inside a functional component, I use a reference and set its default value to zero. And to link it to our scroll view so that scroll Y gets updated, we can use the onscroll callback with an animated event. I'll take the content offset.y value of each event and set the current scroll Y value to this. Also, remember to turn the scroll view into an animated one since we're using an animated event inside onscroll. Great, now that we know the scroll position, we can use it to play a few animations. Let's start with the banner that, if you remember, should scale if we scroll up. We can do this with an interpolation of the scroll Y value. If the scroll position is between, let's say, minus 200 and zero, the image should scale up. For that, let's apply a scale transformation with, as I mentioned, a scroll Y interpolation. If it's at minus 200, we want to scale the image five times, and if it's at zero, only one. This interpolation will then compute all the intermediate values, meaning if we're halfway at minus 100, the scaling will be three, right between one and five. Also, by default, the interpolation will extend its boundaries, meaning past minus 200, it will also go beyond five. That's what we want when we extrapolate on the left, so let's keep it this way. But on the right side of the input range, when scroll Y is higher than zero, we should clamp the value. This will keep the scale at one, even when scroll Y is past zero. Before we run this, we need to turn the image background into an animated component, simply because we're setting its style based on an animated value. Because image background is not a common component as view, image, or scroll view, you have to create one using the animated.createAnimatedComponent function. And we can now replace the image background with this one. Cool, now we need to blur the banner when we scroll up and down. 
On Twitter, it does so so that you can see the pull to refresh little arrow when going up or the username and tweets count when going down. Let's use Expo Blur for this, which gives us this blur view component. We'll add it inside our image background so that it covers all of it when necessary. Now the problem is that we only want this to show when we're scrolling up or down, so we'll play with its opacity once again based on the scroll position. The opacity should be set to 1 when we're going a little up, let's say minus 50 pixels, and also when we go down, so let's do this opacity transition between 50 and 100. The last thing is to make the blur view an animated component, just like we did with image background. That's what makes it understand animated styles using interpolations. Let's create it and replace the blur view with its animated counterpart. Okay, if you've understood what we just did here, we'll do the same thing over and over with all the remaining blocks. I'll quickly add the code for the pull to refresh arrow, which should show when scrolling up, and you'll see how the logic remains the same. So the arrow is set a little lower than the top screen position, that's why we have this top 13 pixels here, and as you can see, we interpolate scroll Y again to play with the opacity. When we scroll up a little, the opacity is transitioned to 1 and stay at 1 past that point, or to 0 if we scroll down. Also, there's this rotation you see right after, that vertically rotate the arrow as soon as we reach this minus 35, minus 45 scroll range. It will then transition from 0 degrees to 180, which makes it turn. Because we don't want the arrow to turn infinitely past minus 45 pixels, we'll clamp the value just so it doesn't go beyond 180 degrees. Alright, now guess what? We'll apply the same technique to show the username and tweets count inside the banner as soon as we go past our user bio. Let's do this one last time, and I'll show you the method again so you can remember how this technique works. We'll create this view that contains our name and the tweets count. We can't show it all the time, it has to be hidden by default and then shown if we start scrolling down. For this, we'll need to interpolate the scroll position and transition from a 0 to 1 opacity when we're past 90 pixels down. I had to play with the values here just to find the right spot, that's where 90 and 110 come from. So when we're at 90 pixels down, the opacity is at 0 then it will slowly move towards 1 till we reach 110 pixels. Again, because we use an animated style, we need to turn the view into an animated one, so we'll replace view with animated.view. Alright, this fades in nicely, but in the Twitter app, the text also moves up while fading in. To do so, nothing simpler, let's set a translate wire transformation that will start when our scroll is at 90 pixels, just like our opacity, and keeps moving even when the name is already visible, so that will be 120 instead of 110. We clamp the value once again, so it doesn't go outside of this 30-0 range, otherwise the text will keep moving up and down. Okay, we're almost there, we only need to animate our profile picture at this point. It should scale down the image as we start scrolling down. For this, guess what? We'll need once again to interpolate scroll Y and use that to set a scale transformation for our image. I'll start by turning the image into an animated one. Then we can scale the image down as we scroll. What you can see here is that it should transition to 0.6, which represents 60% of its original size on both width and height. It will happen between 0 and the height of our expanded header, which means as soon as we've scrolled the navigation bar, stop scaling the image. The result is pretty good, but we're not there yet. One problem is that we scale the image, which in turn makes it move upwards. Instead, it should scale but stay in place. In other words, we need to counterbalance the now missing space that we get below the image. I know this might not make so much sense at first sight, but basically we're trying to compute this part, so we can then divide it by 2 and add this half on top of the image. This should then scale down the image, but also keep it in place. Now to get this value, let me walk you through the steps. Our image is 80 pixels high with its borders. When scaled down, we only keep 60%, which is 48. This means we've lost 80 minus 48, 
that's 32 pixels in total of the original size. We divide this by 2, we get 16, and that's what we should then progressively translate our image to. We then keep the same input range as with the scale transformation, but we replace the output to be between 0 and 16 pixels. See? How cool is that? Alright, let me recap briefly what we've done here. We started with a simple idea using a scroll view to show our name and tweets that we use 90% of the screen size and then keep the 10% for the navigation bar that would stay at the top. To do this, we've kept track of the scroll position using an animated event on the scroll view and scroll Y, which then represents the vertical scroll. With that, we could add all the other elements, our banner that scales as we scroll up and that shows a blurry view inside which would only appear when necessary, but also the pull to refresh arrow that rotates and changes its opacity based on the scrolling as well. Finally, the username and tweets count that would fade in and move up as we scroll down. All of this has been done using value interpolations, which is what we've also used in our last part with the profile picture. Okay, I truly hope you found this helpful and if you did, there's a lot more to come on this channel. Remember to subscribe if you don't want to miss it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.